very much, Mr. Speaker. I'd say I'm pleased to rise to speak to the motion, but I'm, I'm not, in fact, because this is a motion that never ought to have graced the floor of the House because it's about separating out an important legislative initiative of the government from an omnibus bill. And the Liberals were very clear in the last campaign that they weren't going to do omnibus bills anymore, and particularly not budget omnibus bills. So it's a shame to have to rise and speak to this motion because it's a shame that this motion was required because it's a shame that the Liberals didn't keep their promise on not using omnibus bills to advance significant legislative changes. And we've heard from Liberal members all day and previously on the budget debate that in their own view, the Infrastructure Bank is a new and significant different way of delivering infrastructure projects. Now, whether you think that's positive or whether you think that's negative, the point is that it's new, it's different, and it's significant. There, there seems to be consensus on that. And if that's the case, then establishing it never should have been uh, something that's done as an add-on to the budget bill. It should have been something that they did with its own legislation and in its own right, Mr. Speaker. So that's why it's a shame we have to discuss this today. And now I want to speak uh, a little bit to the other parts of the motion, which have to do with the virtues of the infrastructure bank, or lack thereof. Uh, all right, Mr. Speaker. And I want to focus particularly on the aspect of cost. There's been a lot of work done to assess the uh, payback or the value to the public of public-private partnerships and the kind of schemes that are being uh, promoted under the infrastructure bank, because this is really just P3s on steroids. If you're a supporter of P3s, uh, this is kind of the logical conclusion, if you will, of the public-private public partnership model. Mr. Speaker, academics like John Loxley have written about the added cost to taxpayers through P3 models and, and I would say also extra costs that we're going to be, be paying because of this infrastructure bank scheme. We've had the Auditor, the Auditor General of Ontario determine that P3s cost taxpayers there an additional $8 billion. The Auditor General of British Columbia estimated that the government lost $81 million in additional interest on uh, P3s where they paid 7.5 percent instead of what their own lending rate was. Uh, and so just to put this in context, Mr. Speaker, I think it might help just to kind of get a sense of the magnitude of the ripoff that we're about to embark on with this Liberal government. If you were at home and you were looking at renovating your kitchen, Mr. Speaker, and say that was a job that would cost about $30,000, and you were going to borrow $22,500 in order to do that project, you had $7,500 to uh, put down, you're going to borrow the other 75%, and you're going to pay 2% interest on that project over 20 years. Well, your cost over the life of that mortgage would be $27,296. The, 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 number, the specific numbers aren't that important. It's really the orders of magnitude. So you're going to pay a little bit over $27,000 all told, all told to get that $22,500. Now, say a contractor comes knocking on your door and says, hey, I got a deal for you. I know you've only got 7,500 bucks. I'm going to give you the other 22,500 that you need. And here's the conditions. I'm going to own your kitchen. And we're going to put a turnstile in. So that every time you go in your kitchen, you're going to pay a toll. And I want a 10% return, cumulative, over years. Well, if you pop that into the mortgage calculator, that means that over the life of the project, instead of paying $27,000, more or less, you're going to pay $51,000 to that contractor. And how are you going to pay it? Well, maybe you're not going to pay it through what you call a mortgage payment. No, you're going to pay it through the tolls that you pay every time you go through the turnstile in your kitchen. Say you were to do that three times a day. The cost of going in your kitchen to get a snack would be $2.35 every time you did it, three times a day. $7.05 a day to go into your kitchen and prepare your own food, no Mr. Way. Speaker. And what that means, now, so if you take that as your fixed cost for going into your own kitchen that you should own, and eating your own food, Mr. Speaker, what that means is that you could have paid back the amount that you would have owed had you borrowed at 2% in 10.6 years. But instead, you're paying that same toll every day for 20 years, Mr. Speaker. So I hope that helps put in perspective for people at home the fact that this is the biggest corporate heist that the Liberals are engineering of the century. Mr. Speaker, and this is about using taxpayer money to line the pockets of private investors, and not even Canadian private investors, Mr. Speaker, but private investors from Saudi Arabia and China and all over the world, Mr. Speaker. 
So that's the magnitude of what we're talking about in terms of the ripoff. And I think people at home, when they hear that, they go, well, you know, the MP from Elma, Elma Transcona must, must, be, uh, must be wrong because that's outrageous. Who would ever go for that deal? That's a stupid deal. Who would do that? Nobody. His math must be wrong. But that's not so, Mr. Speaker. I wish it were so. I wish I was wrong about that. We've heard from other authorities that this model risks doubling or tripling the cost of the project. That lines up exactly with these numbers, Mr. Speaker. And it is a bad deal. And one wonders why it is that the Liberals are willing to contemplate it. I don't know. Well, I have some, some guesses, Mr. Speaker. But even the most charitable guesses aren't that favorable. So if we leave aside, I think, some reasonable guesses that the evidence suggests in terms of cash for access fundraisers and a cozy relationship between the Liberal leadership and Canada's corporate tycoons, and we just look at what the benefit would be if those guys weren't your friends, well, the benefit would be that you would be able to start some inf more infrastructure projects now, and we've heard Liberal members talk about that today, actually and keep the real cost of those projects off the books so that you could look like you were balancing the budget when you weren't balancing the budget. And that's all well and good if it's a game of fun with numbers and an exercise in terms of how to make your political party look good, but Canadians want investment in infrastructure. It's one of the reasons they voted for the Liberals. I don't think they're getting what they asked for, but it's one of the reasons, I think it's fair to say, that, that people felt uh, compelled to vote for the Liberal Party so that the, uh, the enthusiasm is there, and the support is there for investment in infrastructure. But Canadians didn't say, invest in infrastructure and don't be honest about us with the cost. They didn't say, invest in it and pretend like we're not paying as much as we really are for those investments. In fact, they said, we are willing to pay, and we were even willing to run a little bit of a deficit in order to do that. But Mr. Speaker, that's, that's not what they're getting here. They didn't ask to be fooled about the real cost of those investments, and they didn't ask to pay a premium in order to be fooled. And that's what's going on here. The Liberals are going to artificially inflate the cost of these projects to the tune of two or three times, in some cases, potentially. Maybe, maybe it's not that much. We would know better if we knew what the rules for the scheme is, except we don't, and we're not going to get time to study it. Because instead of putting it in its own bill and giving it its proper due and studying not, not just debate in the House, but study in committee and time for civil society and economists and academics and everyone else to study this bill as it goes through the House, they're going to ram it through in an omnibus budget bill. Maybe if we had the time, well, maybe it wouldn't be so bad. I don't know, Mr. Speaker, but the numbers so far seem to suggest, and some of the expert uh, uh, opinion so far suggests that we are talking about a doubling of some of these costs. And what's the reason? So that Liberals can hide the real cost of these projects from Canadians because they want to make their books look better. Well, you know, better books are a good thing. That's nice. It's always better when you can have your revenue come closer to what your costs are. But better books because you're dealing on another ledger and just not recording some of the substantial costs and actually causing Canadians to pay more money over the long term it's not better. That's just, that's political smoke and mirrors is what that is, Mr. Speaker. And to ask Canadians to pay billions of dollars more to line the pockets of corporate CEOs just for the sake of the Liberals having better speaking notes, Mr. Speaker, I think is an offense. And it's, it's an offense to the intelligence of Canadians. Uh, and it's an offense to their wallet, which I don't know, uh, you know, if the, if the Liberals have been out there talking to people, but they ought to know uh, Canadians' wallets are not particularly padded these days. They're difficult times. And so to inflate the cost of these projects, maybe for the sake of their buddies, maybe for the sake of better speaking points, I think is, is completely wrong-headed. And I haven't even had time to get into the problems of what they did when they were setting it up. And I think Canadians have real cause to worry. People from Winnipeg have seen what happens when people in the public sector hire out people in the private sector on the, on the P3 model and don't take the time to do the proper due diligence and provide the right kind of scrutiny for those deals. It's, it's clear that you end up with a bunch of wasteful spending and you end up with project costs that escalate far beyond what they were supposed to be in the first place. And if there's any lesson that, that we've learned in Winnipeg, I'd like to share that with the country, it's that if you are going to partner with private people 
to-do infrastructure, and I'm really not convinced that's a good idea, the evidence says it's not, then you definitely need to spend the time to have the appropriate scrutiny and oversight to make sure that taxpayers aren't getting ripped off. It's the exact opposite of what the Liberals are doing by ramming this bill through in, in an omnibus budget bill. It's why we need to carve it off so we can take the proper amount of time to study it. Thank you very much. Uh, questions and comments. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And, you know, on a number of points, I would have to disagree with my colleague from Elmwood. Um, one of the, the biggest issues, and we hear this, and I, it sounds as if they've actually convinced the Conservatives on this issue. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit of a surprise. They're trying to say that the, the only investors are these big, huge corporations. And it's the corporations that are going to take all these dividends away from Canadians. You know, some of the greatest, most significant investors today and going into the future are places like CPP. It's things like the teachers, uh, teacher federations. They're looking for ways to invest. In fact, we have millions of dollars every year leaving Canada because they're looking for investment banks so that they can, in fact, invest in infrastructure programs. We're seeing that. Canadian dollars, union dollars, other dollars leaving Canada to invest in infrastructure outside of Canada. Now we have a, uh, we're setting a framework that would enable some of those pension funds to invest here in Canada. Why does the member so adamantly oppose having this sort of an option? And that's all it is, is an option for some of these organizations to invest those Canadian dollars back here in Canada, in our infrastructure. Honourable Member for Elma Transcona. Well, according to the press, Mr. Speaker, it's not unions and pension funds that are reviewing the speaking notes of Liberal ministers, it's the BlackRock Group. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Yorkton Melville. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I want to appreciate the MP from Elmwood Transcona and his explanation with the kitchen. See you, I could really relate to that. And I appreciate that, that you did say that a little bit there about E3s, that if proper scrutiny was done and things, it could be done well. So I want to come back to you and just ask, or to him through you, Mr. Speaker, and ask the question, I'm wondering with my kitchen that I'm paying to use, when it needs repair, how is that taken care of? The Honourable Member for Elmwood Transcona. Well, I mean, I think part of the problem with this scheme is that we don't even know yet, and that's one of the questions. So I would say, with respect to a lot of P3s, and this is part of the problem with P3s, is that often at the end of the useful life of the asset, at the end of those 20 years when your stove isn't working quite right and maybe it's time to replace the fridge and the floor's scuffed up and you're thinking it's time to invest again, that's when the ownership of the asset re reverts back to the government or back to the homeowner at that point. Then the contractor's back at your door saying, hey, I'll cut you a deal again. That was a great deal. And the really offensive part of this scheme, I'm glad you mentioned it because I wanted to get this in, is that the contractor is suggesting to the homeowner in this case that they don't have the $7,500. How are they going to get it? I'll tell you what. Sell me your washroom. Sell me your airport. That's how you can capitalize the $7,500 you need for me to come in and rip you off on your kitchen. Questions and comments? I guess they come on time. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Services. You know, it always strikes me, uh, Mr. Speaker, when I hear the New Democrats <laughs> taking umbrage with the fact that hardworking Canadians, with their pension money, money that they need to grow, yeah. money that they need to earn returns on, yeah. in order to ensure a healthy pension for themselves and their families. They can take that money today, and they do. CPPIB, Caisse de Depot, OMERS, teachers, you name it. They go all around the world, Mr. Speaker. They invest in Australian highways. They invest in British airports. They invest in energy infrastructure all over the world, and they garner those returns that secures the pensions and the future of Canadian workers. We want to say those pension funds should be able to take that money, invest it here at home, and garner those returns, and get those returns for Canadian families and Canadian pensioners. Why will this member not recognize that? Yeah, yeah. Member for Elmwood Transcona. Well, I just think this is an obvious conflation of issues. The fact of the matter is, is that 
Look, is that they're not, you know, the Prime Minister isn't meeting with pension funds in Toronto hotel rooms behind closed doors. And they're not the ones that are writing the rules for this infrastructure bank. And if they want to have an open and transparent vehicle by which pension funds can actually do some of that investment, and it makes sense, and the revenue isn't just about charging Canadians user fees and tolls, then that's something to discuss. It's something I would hope that they would bring in a separate bill to the House and still give it the time that it would need for study. So the process is broken. They're trying to use pension funds as a screen for getting away and helping their, 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 their buddies, Mr. Speaker. And even if it were the case that it was all just pension funds, you'd still need appropriate scrutiny. You'd still need good parliamentary process. So get with the program, you guys.